Hey guys, this is Tyler Spees from Clickstoff. Uh, kind of a new format here. I just wanted to go over uh, my winning build um, from the Clicks Cup, how I made it, um, the specific strengths of the team, a few different uh, few different key moments from the tournament I can go over with you and how I my thought process for how I built those. Um, hopefully some of you guys would want to watch it. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to give it a shot, see how it goes. Uh, pardon me if I ramble in any of the... Uh, <laughs> any of the, the the sections here but um uh yeah first off uh this is the team that i built here um it's going to be um you know 60 point spider ham here um with uh, i have the awk arms that i'm equipping or wall arms i'm equipping him with uh high evolutionary prime who comes equipped with the isotope uh chip who i am hopefully equipping with the emotional modifier uh three uh maggots from house of x uh we got ultra humanite at 25 points and then two grods um both at 10 uh comes up to 300 even it's um plus nine animal theme team as you can see here um it's it's basically an alpha strike team but with a lot more going on i feel like um but yeah it's it it's built like an alpha strike when you see it you know it's coming across the team it's gonna hit you so uh yeah um how i sort of sort of built it um there's a few things that's kind of inspired me. I, I played against Patrick Frazier in, um, I think, the Hero Clicks for Huntington's event, and he was running a spider, a team of Spider Ham, Chip, and uh, what else? A couple of maggots, I think. And he, um, I, I, I basically didn't expect um, the the reach that it had because, um, you know, you can only carry with ham you know, or or chip, so it, I wasn't too concerned about it. And then he, what he did was he TK'd up ham, and then he <laughs> carried everybody up to ham, and then he carried everybody up with ham. So um, it gets the full map reach there. Um, I wasn't expecting it, um, so it, it does, did more than I thought it was, and I thought it was a really cool way to get across the map, um, utilizing spider ham, who's already like an alpha strike piece. Um, so I wanted to kind of build around that. I had seen other teams with Animal um, in the past um, do really well, and so I, I initially tried to throw the thing together. Um, the initial version had four Wendigos, just because, you know, Wendigos, some of the best point-for-point -point piece in the game. You, you have, if you're playing Animals, you have to run Wendigos, was my initial thought. Um, but then as I playtested more, uh, Wendigos basically did nothing on the team except for give up points. Um, I'm using all four actions almost every turn on the alpha and then on the follow-ups. So they're never really moving up. Um, they make easy targets for, for people to just pick off points. So I um, ended up dropping them eventually and just going with this full um, full alpha team that I'm carrying everybody up. Everybody's moving except for, you'll see it later with the um, exception of Ulster Humanite, who helps in the back from other ways. Um, obviously, I want to run a retail. Um, so if retails were, were a thing, I would run them. but um, they're not, so I'm just carrying everything up. Uh, but but that was the initial thought process on it. Um, I moved around some things, um, obviously, as I was building. Um, I had, at one point, High Evolutionary at 40, because it offers me another Empower, um, another a solid attacker in High Evolutionary. He's, he's a very good attacker. Um, gives him two stop clicks, so, so he's, nobody's attacking him. Nobody's, nobody's getting through that. Um, and then I had a Porter Pog at one point to give me another sidestep with the Green Lantern tune ability. It's very good. Um, a few few iterations with more or less Grods uh, settled on two just because the points work out that way. And, you know, Grod is obviously very good. Um, yeah, that's about it. Chip is obviously the taxi. He He's the lichpin. Um, as soon as Chip, this, this team could not work without Chip. But as soon as Chip came out, it made animals way better, just because there's there is some wild card carded animals. There's animals desperately needed a taxi. So there you go. Um, that's so that's kind of how the team uh, came together. And then um, uh, as far as specific strengths of the build, I was going to go over each piece individually and why it's on the team, and then show what the whole team can do, like as a unit later. Um, so I guess we'll just do. Uh, <laughs> top to bottom here um so gorilla grot i mean it's pretty obvious it's it's a animal fluff it's plus plus one to the theme helps a lot um the empower is amazing on the opener um it's also obviously really good um you can empower your maggots up to a four hammer i can get up to a five with all of his free attacks 
Um, another big thing is uh, this map specifically that I'm playing on has a lot of hindering, and it has hindering on the starting areas. So um, a lot of times people don't realize that or remember that. Um, so if, on your initial move up, you get to roll for his free trait uh, that works with there and hindering. Also, they, they move around a lot. Again, there's a lot of hindering on the map. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, he has a free... He can move, or no, he's a he can move four squares um, with leap climb, um, and then either quake or mind control as free. He does have four range with the mind control and double target, so that's pretty good. You can also quake mind control now. So you, you know, if you quake nine people, you can actually mind control nine targets with him. Uh, it's a really strong follow up. If they leave one alive and you're high evolutionary, you can get his attack up to a twelve, and then just he can just destroy teams like that <laughs> as a ten point figure. He's very strong. Um, next would be Ultra Humanite. Um, the, basically, the simple reason he's on the team is that I, I searched Animal and TK, and he was the cheapest option. Uh, but he actually does a, a decent amount. He actually does a lot. Um, so his um, Injustice League role um, can be clutch. Uh, basically, at the beginning of the turn, you roll. If you get a 6, you can token um, any opposing character within or that's under 100 points. Um, it, it's incredibly strong. You can just win you games, essentially. Um, I'll show you a little bit later, but it, it's incredibly strong. Um, also, you'll notice later, he stays in the back the entire game. So he's in my starting area. I'm in their starting area. So they're, they're never really punching him. So he's, uh, he's rolling that every turn. So you get several chances a game, and it's very, very effective in keeping you up on the tempo. So... Um, he also has his mind control thing is, is very effective if you lose map and they take you to blocking or something like that. Um, it can be very helpful. Um, and then also, uh, as I'll show you later, his Injustice League team ability comes in very handy with um, a Spider Man. Um, next would be, you know, Maggot. You know, I feel like everybody knows what he does. Um, he's the, the prob. He's uh, makes pogs um, that that attack after moving. They're autonomous, which is amazing. Um, they can have exploit, which is good for getting through things. Um, the main thing, I 95% of the time, I'm making the poison pog because being able to deal damage without having to roll for it is great. You know exactly how much you're going to do. You can plan your turns around it. Um, there's not much reducers out there. There's not uh, not much length of dial so you know as an example there's <laughs> every team every other team has flashes at least two um these guys can just kill two of them without even without having to roll they just move up and poison them twice um it's incredible same thing with um, molecule man he's he's in a lot of play um just just great all around they're five clicks long for 40 points they have super senses the whole dial they're super hard to kill um I mean, not super hard to kill, but for 40 points, it's super hard to kill. And when there's three of them, that's that's 15 clicks of life, all with super senses that they have to burn through, uh, which is really, really tough to do. Um, they have sidestep. They get the, the charge. It, it, he's one of those pieces that you have to kill. Like, you have to focus this guy if you see him on the enemy team, because if you don't, and he gets a full turn, he's going to get so much value. He's going he's gonna to sidestep, drop a pog, poison, attack with the pog, eat the pog, and then charge with an 11 for 4 with, like, 6 movement on the charge. Um, it's just nuts, and I can do that three times um, if they all survive. So just, just crazy good. Uh, then we have Chip. Went over him a little bit. Team needs a taxi. He's a Green Lantern team ability. Helps a ton. Um, he's another prob. Uh, he's a TKer, which can come in clutch on the on the follow up turns. Um, he uh, drops the pog, or not the pog, the um, uh, the mitt, which is right here. He can drop the spotlight too, but you literally never do that. Don't ever do that. It's never right. <laughs> um, the po the the mitt um, gives adjacent characters ESD, which is really easy to set up on your on your alpha. Not the whole team, but like half the team. Um, the entire team is like 18 defenses. So with this, it's going to be a 20 excuse me from range and then um you know 21 with a modifier it's it's um it's pretty rough um to actually try to kill the team on their follow-up turns um especially because of all the probs that helps a ton um so he's all around great he also um is like one of the only ranged attackers on the team if you see like a, a combat reflex piece um he can make attacks with um uh, high evolutionary is perplexed, getting them up to a 12. You know, I've surprised some people with that. So um, definitely not useless in the realms of attacking. Um, and then, oh, also this thing uh, can attack. It's a 10 attack, one damage. Um, 
it, it if you can attack with it you should um on the opener um it it, it can do things that that people aren't expecting get the, that extra chip damage in to, to finish off somebody on their last click of regen or something like that um it doesn't get the modifiers um from like empower or the perplexes but uh you know the, with the emotional modifier there the defenses are a little bit lower than normal so uh just always something to keep in mind um and then we have spider ham as i said that the team doesn't really work without him um, he's your he's carrying everybody up with the green lantern team ability um he's making the free attacks um not a ton to say about him he's got leadership too which is um pretty pretty good obviously you want to remove the tokens as much as possible um yeah the, i mean everybody knows why he, why he's on there um he, he's just an all-around really good piece um high evolutionary is um if he was not keyword restriction, he would be the best piece in the game for sure. Um, as of now, he is the best piece on animals for sure. Um, he's 20 points. Um, he just does so much for the team. So 20 points you get. Um, defend with an 18 defense. That's great. Um, it really only affects the um, uh, the grods on this team pretty much, but um, still pretty good. Uh, he has double perplex for animals. Um, notably, you cannot perplex your pogs. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, he's got a leadership, and when he uses it, um, he can also remove a, a token from anyone with the animal keyword um, within six, within his range, which is um, incredible. So that's two tokens. So um, between these two, you can remove three tokens a turn if you hit the leaderships. And then with this, you're obviously getting, getting them um, a token. So um, action economy-wise, it, it does pretty well. Um, and then... I'm trying to think what else he has. Um, he has a stop click. Stop click, um, once it's revealed after resolution, so he can be placed anywhere on the map. Um, that's obviously something to almost guarantee they're never going to uh, kill this guy if you don't want them to. Uh, but a lot of times what they do is, um, what I do with it is <laughs> I use it pretty offensively. Um, so if I see them planning out their turn, obviously going for a big attack, and they punch this guy first, I'll just place this guy next to their big attacker and either make them just waste an attack on a, on a, the last click of a 20 point piece or, you know, try to break away and then I prob them out of it. Um, so it can block lines of fire for, for probs on, on key attacks. Um, just be aware that you can use that pretty offensively and people won't see that coming. Um, I'm trying to think. There's nothing really... He has precision strike and an 11 attack, so he is actually your best bet to get through um, super sense clicks. Um, I use him to kill uh, the flash, uh, the charge flash with super senses a lot of times, just perplexes. Again, this is on your follow-up turns uh, because you, nobody's really killing this guy on your on your opener because you have so many other threats. Uh, but you can get his defense up to a 13, then he has precision strike to just take a pot shot at somebody. He's six or six range, so um, yeah, it's it's just other options for you to use. Um, uh, this is his object. It just comes with him. Um, it's just the perplex. This is actually what gives him the perplex, not a uh, someone is dial um and then waldo arms is so underrated i think this piece or this it might be might be the best object right now um it's definitely top three i think it's better than um power gem on a lot of different people's including sky tyrant might be, make a video about that later but um it just oh i had power gem on ham originally and there were so many i would say over half the games probably I, I didn't even use it because he's you know he's always i can perplex his attack up to 14 already he's high enough he's he's already dealing five damage with the empowers um he normally doesn't need to do more than two because of how the meta is right now with such short dials power gem just doesn't do a lot a lot of times and wall arms always does something every single turn even even the bad rolls are, are good. They're they're great actually. Um, plus one attack and damage is really good, especially when you're making so many attacks. Um, it protects them more with the follow up, um, especially coupled with the emotional modifier if you roll a one or a two. Um, three or four, you know, he gets free in cap. Um, that's probably the worst option, but you know, it's still really good. Um, we mentioned um, this can just win you games if you give somebody a token. So it's kind of the same here if you can hit a key target. Um, it, it, it can just clutch this stuff out. Um, it can also give you another hit or miss to get more Gorilla Grods or, or other, obviously, trouble or troublemakers, things like that. So um, one game against PJ, I, I charged with this guy, made an attack, then made a free attack with his trait, and then made a free hit in cap with um, with the, uh, excuse me, with the Waldo Arms. Um, 
and then you know that's I hit all three, and then I just got to make a uh, a Grot in Power Piece. Or actually, I think I made a Brainiac there because they had some elevated characters. But um, yeah, it's 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 incredibly good. Just any anything that lets you make a free attack is incredibly strong. Um, this guy gives you that. This thing gives you that option. Um, 66% of the time. Um, it also gives you giant reach, which is incredibly key on the alpha strike. Um, it gives you options for placement. It lets you attack over barrier to hit um, Giganta, which is really <laughs> big in the meta right now. I did that so much. Um, it's incredibly strong. Uh, yeah, and then emotional modifier. Um, I was originally not a believer of this. I thought it was mid-tier at best, but it's probably up there with Wall of Arms as one of the best three um, pieces or equipments in modern. Um, again, for kind of the same reason, it's always, always useful. You're, it's always going to be used. You're never going to be able to to have a, a a turn where you where you're like man i wish i didn't have this wall or this uh emotional modifier instead of something else um it's always going to be good specifically good for this team um as i'll show before you can kind of double dip on its effects um it also just increases your odds so much and against certain matchups like um you know there was a triple jason team right you could make your whole team have battle fury um the battle fury is situational but again it can just make you win against batman um the double null team i never ran into it but if i did i just give my whole team battle fury and then i'm not really not really scared of null that much so um the the battle fury is situational but very very useful in those situations and the other two are just always good um but yeah, that's um, the individual teams. And then after that, I guess probably next I'll go over my standard opener. Um, just the, the thing that I do almost every game um, and explain why I do it. Um, it does get a little complicated, so uh, we'll go after that next. Hey, just real quick, I have to mention this. <laughs> when I was recording this originally, I forgot. the main One of the main things this guy does is um, he got an errata from WizKids. Um, so that now, uh, it used to be that he made Animal Team's theme teams, uh, name theme teams. That no longer matters anymore. So they switch it to Animal Teams now get uh, six theme probs instead of three. Um, this is the main reason that I have so many probs on the team. I can uh, theoretically in one turn prob ten times. Uh, so I just, just real quick, I forgot about that, but it's one of the main, main, probably the main reason to play him, and one of the one of the main reasons that the team is go so good. So I, I just had to throw that in there real quick. Okay, so here is my um, standard opener. I want to go over real quick. Um, so this is the starting position, more or less every every game. You can go up or down, doesn't really matter. But this is the formation you want to be in. Um, Basically, uh, let's see. So for the first turn um, is is pretty standard all the way around. Um, you're going to TK with um, Ultra Humanite to get the arms back to um, Spider Ham. Then you're going to equip. Um, so that's your first two actions. Um, second two actions, you are going to move out um, this maggot to here, moving back to here, picking this up, and then sidestep, dropping it off in Chip Square, and then equip with Chip. So these are your four actions, um, first turn, pretty much every turn, but you are not done here. Uh, it is very important that you do <laughs> several. Okay, so to be clear, the first thing that I, <laughs> I messed messed up here is that beginning of game, you got to pick a keyword or <laughs> a character with uh, with ham here. I have forgotten that before. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> it's very important that you pick something there. Um, but yeah, uh, these are the first four actions uh, that you do every turn. And then you got two free actions, and you are going to want to do, well, three, technically. Um, this guy broke first turn of immunity, so you're just going to perplex up his defense twice with High Evolutionary. That almost never matters, um, because they're not going to come across the board to try and get this guy who's already locked up against your team um, completely surrounded. But just, you know, you can do it, so why not? Um, the other two free actions are going to be... Um, free action with Spider Ham to choose the Green Lantern team ability. Um, because you're going to want to do something else with your wild card on turn two. Uh, same thing with Chip. You're going to want a free action with Chip to choose minus one defense with the emotional modifier. Um, you want to do those every game because, again, your turn two, you're going to want to switch those up and you want to have them already selected on your turn one so you could use them here. Um, one thing, <laughs> it's very minor, but one thing to keep in mind is that if they have a. Um, uh, da, 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 
was his name? Scarab, uh, Secret Six Team or Monster or something else. Um, this guy did break first turn immunity, and this guy is equipped automatically. Um, so you know, you might want to move it a little bit. Um, but you know, he's a twenty with super senses, and they're they're pinging him for one if they shoot. They're probably equipping or something on on their turn one, so most likely it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe you could actually you probably it's probably pretty easy. Just <laughs> do it like this at the, on that game, so he doesn't get shot. Um, it doesn't actually change anything. Um, but for most games, you want to have him uh, adjacent to high evolutionary, so you can perplex. I don't think that matters. It's very small detail. Uh, but then you pass. Um, they obviously can't do much here. Um, and then your turn two. Uh, is a little more complicated. Uh, so let's assume we don't get any any leaderships at all. Um, we are going to... There's a lot of beginning of turn stuff that you got to do on this turn team. There's there's five different first or beginning of turn actions that you want to do. Um, so you're going to want to roll four in any order you want. It's up to you, but um, you're going to want to roll for this uh, Ultra Humanites um, Injustice League thing where you need a six. You're going to run a roll for his willpower that he has just on dial. You're going to want to roll for um, Spider-Ham's leadership. You're going to want to roll for this guy's leadership. And then this is the most important one. you got to roll for Waldo Arms at the beginning of the turn. It is not a free action. It's beginning of turn. You have to roll that. If you forget it and do an action, you're out of luck. Um, so just be... Be aware of that. <laughs> that might be the thing that bumps Wall of Arms down to the second best object, just because it's going to be forgotten so much. I forget it. Everybody's going to forget it at some point. But just try to remember that. There's five things you got to do at the beginning of your turn. Just just roll those five dice. Um, okay. After that, assuming we failed everything, <coughs> oh excuse me, we are going to TK with Ultra Humanite um, to TK this guy up six squares. Um, so that is the the first action of the turn. Um, he's always going to be here. Um, you know, he can if they have a um, uh, what's his name Oz. He can move back, and then it would it would pretty much be the same thing. You'll probably just perplex his defense or his speed twice with high evolutionary. It doesn't really affect you too much. Um, but yeah, he'll, he'll be here for the most games. Um, then you're going to want to carry with Chip. We place like this because obviously Chip has the most characters around him, and we want to save sidesteps as much as possible. Um, so something we could do, I we went over this, me and Dan, um, went so long, like, like two hours trying to figure this out. So you can do this um, on your opener and then sidestep with Maggot here. Um, but it does a couple things. First, that you waste a sidestep with your Maggot. And second, when you move up, um, you'll see it's it's pretty limited on space. Um, so this is the best way I found. If you if you figure out a better way to do this, please just message me because I've tried and this this is the best way I've found to do it. So we are going to um, so that's the first action. Second action is going to be to move up with Chip, uh, placing in a very specific order. Um, so the guys that can't sidestep, which are him and him, uh, High Evolutionary and Grod, we place here and here. Uh, then we place a maggot here, and then two maggots here. Now you'll understand that one of these maggots cannot come. So you do have to sacrifice some um, some sidesteps um, to get everybody in. Um, you can sidestep with like a like a chip, and then do that. But we want to save chip sidestep for the for repositioning in the front. Green Lantern sidesteps are infinitely more valuable than maggot sidesteps. So um, we are going to move up like this. That's the second action of the turn. Uh, on chip, and then we sidestep anywhere up here with a maggot, and then sidestep here with a maggot. Um, so we, we've, we're out of two maggot sidesteps. So we, when we move up, we have one one maggot that can sidestep after the move. Um, if you want to mark him or something, just make sure your opponent's aware that you, you do have one left, and then you also have the chips left. Um, so that is the second action of the turn. Um, third action of the turn, since we're not doing anything with the fourth action anyway, is we're going to move this guy, because it just makes placement so much easier. You don't have to carry anything, you don't have to waste any sidesteps, you have the extra action, why not use it? Um, to great effect. So he's just going to move to here. Uh, give him a token, that's the third action. And then the fourth action is going to be to move with uh, spider Ham. So this is, up until this point, this is what you do every game, um, barring you know, some crazy thing, they move up halfway for some reason or something. This, this is what I did, my turn to every single game. Um, so just 
what I actually did was I, I took pictures um, from Roll20 to, to study them, to just just remember these placements in my head so I had them down so I didn't have to think about them. Um, I actually looked at them before, the night before um, in my hotel room. So, um, you know, just something to keep in mind. If you find a better way to do it, then that's fine, but this is just how I, I did it. So just explaining that. Um, after this, um, with the move up of Hammer Eye, it gets... Um, uh, it branches out a little bit. Obviously, you have to react to if they buried or not, who you want to attack, things like that. But um, I have something set up here, so I'm just going to do just like a, a standard couple moves that you can do um, real quick. So I'll be right back with that. Okay, so this is, like I said before, the standard opener uh, that you're going to go again or go in, into most games. Um, kind of just ignore like the team over. This is what I had in my Roll20 room. Um, just a sort of cookie cutter thing. I'm not not focusing on what the those characters can do specifically, just what my team can do um, in general. Um, so right here we have three actions done, and we have four th four my fourth action left, um, and that's mostly going to be um, Hammer Eye moving up. Um, he can move up 12 squares. Um, so a couple options here. Um, this is normally when I go ahead and perplex, just because the lines can get a little bit weird moving up, and generally. Um, I, I don't want to use my perplexes um, for attack because, it, you know, I can't perplex the the maggots on their attack or damage or anything like that. Um, I could perplex a ham's damp or attack up to a 14, but generally don't need that with all my probs. Um, I generally don't need any extra any extra help on the attack with the probs with the modifier lowering them. So I generally put it into defense, most likely on ham, um, almost always, um, just because. You know, if I if I perplex one of the maggots, they're just going to focus the other two, so it doesn't really help a ton. Um, and high evolutionary is already pretty safe. Um, chip, you know, they can't focus chip, but um, I don't know. Maybe if you want to perplex chip, you can. I just have found generally um, ham gets focused the most. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll normally perplex up a defense here um, just to do it really real quick and easy while while they're adjacent. Um, yeah, and then I move up. So that is the uh, da, 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 fourth action of the turn. Um, again, you get to move 12, so what do we do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 79, 12, 12. All right, so here is where I'm at. Um, we carry, this is kind of like my standard in my head. Um, it, it changes almost every game just because, you know, there's so many options. There's so many teams out there. People can do different things, but this is a standard template I go for, and then I'll, I'll adjust it in my head as I need to. Um, put those guys up because you want the empowers up as far as you can. Um, you put the um, do, 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 the chip back here because uh, he's going to want to sidestep. And then you just fill the rest in as best you can. You know, it not, doesn't matter too much. Um, you're going to want to put one of the maggots that has not size, the only maggot that's not sized up. You're going to put him forward as much as possible, even on the, either on the top or the bottom, depending on where you want to uh, sidestep and then place a poison. Um, because the other two are going to get carried up with the, uh, with the chip uh, sidestep. So this is generally how I, you know, like I said, the standard template, you can change it based on a lot of different things. If you need to get further with hammer, for some reason, if it's all the way in the back, you can, you can do stuff like place chip even all the way up here and then sidestep if you need hammer eye to get way back here for a high attack or there, there's a lot of different options here <laughs> at this point it's it's not a standard thing anymore you just got to go with what's best um but again this is just what i found to uh to work in my head um so right here we're at four actions we're, we're out of <laughs> we're out of cost of actions this turn um so we only got three actions and autonomous left um so at this point, um, you should be at every game pretty much taking a free action with Hammer Eye. Um, he's done all the carrying he's going to do. So you want to switch free action to Wild Card and switch to Injustice League from um, this guy. <laughs> um, because he's going to be making at least one free attack with his passive, maybe two with an end cap or, or just a normal free um, attack from wall arms so that's two chances to remove a token from him uh, very similar to sky tyrant people realize how good injustice league was with free attack so um you have access to that it's definitely definitely very good to do so do that every game that's the standard just do it here before after you after you carry just so you remember um okay um and then uh again 
normally what you would do here, um, at least what I've been doing recently, is just side step forward with chip. Um, you can carry everybody wherever you want. So you would place like here um, with hammer eye because he gets the, the two empowers. Um, you're, you're a five attack. You have giant reach, so you can reach you know things in the back that are that are giant. You could punch up deep here for five. Uh, maybe twice if you if you roll the thing, uh, but he's just your you know your main attacker. You want the the empowers on him if you if you need them, um, and then uh, placing leave the maggot here that has not sidestepped yet. Uh, place the other two maggots up here. Um, you know they can. I probably should have got a maggot. Um, what is the name? Eni. I think I have him. I do not. I didn't think this through. Um, here, let's just use... I mean, I guess a bit. That's fine. Um, just just as a placeholder for where you can drop these things. Um, so from this opener... Oh, you're also going to want to... I mean, you can carry this guy up. It, you know, if you place him one down, you can be in stealth. If you want to move one down, maybe you... Uh, if they're placed on there or something. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, you can now make the maggots here. Um, so he could place it here, he gets one in power, he can poison, then attack, and then eat it up. Same thing down here. And then you also always have um, this guy, which can, you know, sidestep forward, place this guy here if you want to poison something in the back. Um, that's kind of just the standard there. Um, again, you always want to pop this thing out if you can. It gives your whole back line ESD, which is very good. Um, and if you can make an attack by, like, sidestepping up here and punching here, you you can do that. Um, maybe it gets you a miss that can get you a Vulcan or something. That'd be um, ideal. But uh, generally don't miss a ton with this turn <laughs> with this team because um, from this position, um, emotional modifiers win four. Everybody is minus defense. That's incredibly helpful for you, obviously. Um, and then after you've done all your attacks and everything, you've generated your pog, um, you're going to want a free action with um, Chip uh, with his emotional modifier to switch to minus one attack. Um, so this is kind of how you get the, the double dipping there. For all of your attacks, their whole team was a minus one to defense. And now for everything they do for you, anybody within four of chip, which is almost everybody, it's hard to get out of that, is going to be a minus one attack to your pretty high defenses, right? Um, your whole team's 18s. Some of them have ESD. Some of them have super senses, combat reflexes. They're all minus one attack. So, um, you know, at in this example... She's going to be a 10 attack, and I'm going to be able to prop her eight times if she wants to retail. Um, the normally um, formidable flash is only an 11 attack, attacking 18s through super senses and probs. Um, so it, it's it's tough to deal with for them for sure on the follow up. Again, this is <laughs> it's it's not normally or almost ever going to look exactly like this, but this is just an example of what you can do with the team. Um, if we're backing up real quick. Just to show another example real quick that I find useful. Uh, kind of place the same way. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah, so if they have a uh, barrier, this team has Molecule Man. Let's say he rolled a six on his, <laughs> a six on his barrier, which does happen. Um, just again, this is just as an example. Uh, bury the whole team up. Uh, you still have a lot of options. Um, so first, with the initial thing, um, with one of the maggots who has sidestep or hasn't sidestep, whatever you would need that turn, you could just generate a pog right here. And it, with the empowers, it can just break this barrier. Um, remove it here. Um, then what you can do is... Where'd it go? Um, you know, there's not a, a real standard here. Um, you know, you can always... Um, probably what you would do in this case would be... Um, to leave one of these spots opened. Um, actually, yeah, what I would do here is go like this. Have this one be the sidestepping maggot. Um, so you would place the pog actually here. Just I'm, I'm really thinking on the fly here, but this is just something. Some of the stuff you can do. Um, so I would you could open it up like this. Um, say that this one is the maggot who has um, not sidestepped yet or is already sidestepped. Generate the pog, punch it. Um, you know, then you have this maggot right here. You can generate poison and punch, and then eat it, and then sidestep out of the way, and then you can still sidestep in with chip. Um, and you know, drop this guy here, drop this guy here to to make your punch with the empowers. Um, you don't get the third 
pog that way there's probably a way to do it i'm just on the fly i'm, I'm thinking through this here um and obviously always drop this at the end um but yeah um you know there's a lot of different ways barrier doesn't really stop this team too much um because if worse comes to worse you can actually punch twice with the the maggots to get through the giant reach helps because you're on an outdoor um outdoor map if they have a colossal that's um, pesky you want to deal with things like that um if they place it a little further back, um, Chip can sidestep over it because he has flight. Um, there's a lot of different options there. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of the standard opener um, with how there, there's there's a ton of different options after you get away from um, the step back here. Um, that that this this is standard every game. You're gonna do what what I did back here when you move up. That that's where you have to. I guess start playing the game um, instead of playing, you know, what, whatever you're doing over there by yourself. Um, you have to react to what your opponent has done, but it has a lot of different options. Um, a lot of damage output in the ideal case. Um, decent in the in the non-ideal case. Um, and then even uh, with, like, you know, I, I practiced against um, Scott Crampton's team um, before the event, and it's pretty annoying um, because he has barrier and he has um, whatever the guy's name is Harry Leland, and you can't place within four of Harry, Harry Leland. So I can't carry up. Let's say that uh, this guy's Harry Leland right here, one one of the front run, line people. Um, I actually can't place within four, so I actually have to place all the way back here. And it, you can clearly see that then I can't sidestep and then generate a a pog and poison. So I can't poison his team. Um, I can do something. Oh, this I pressure addresses. I could. Um, size up in generator pog and charge with it and attack in, in a clutch. Um, what I actually never did this once in the in the tournament, and I I stress that you should not do this very often at all, is to leave your maggot out there or leave your pog out there. Um, there's obviously situations where you will have to do this, but you want to eat it every game. Uh, one, it gives you food tokens, but more importantly, it lets you generate them throughout the game. And on this team, it, it's pretty likely that your maggots are going to survive the the follow up turn. So, um, a lot of times, I, I actually like it. Like I said, I never generated a pog, and uh, and actually left it out there throughout the entire turn. I never did that once. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, but even against the Harry Leland team, um, you got a lot of options. I I would generally just, um, you know, also I would do is move up here. Well, if he plays in hindering, obviously I forgot to mention you're gonna want to roll if they're in the hindering there um, with the uh, uh, the grod. But yeah, you would just move up. You put everybody in in hindering. You would um, say minus one attacks with this thing. Um, Perplex up defense and just say pass, and then hope that you can uh, survive the next turn with all your probs. And then you would you would try to survive his first attack, and then and then counter. And it, it actually it a lot of times is enough, um, even for that. Even when you don't get an attack off of the opening. So um, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty solid, pretty hard to deal with for for most people. But again, that for rarely ever happens. In most situations, you're you're so far up after the first attack that it's hard for them to come back. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I guess as much as I can explain, um, without you actually playing the team. Um, but you know, it's, it's a lot of fun to play a lot of probs, um, a lot of, a lot of defense, uh, pretty easy to overwhelm them. Um, the action economy, like I mentioned before, is pretty good with, um, with this guy, you know, possibly getting rolls or you get in caps, a lot of leadership in justice league. Um, some I was talking with PJ after the tournament, and he said something that's kind of stuck <laughs> stuck with me a little bit. Is that you're always your goal on? We were talking about tempo teams and what that means, um, but generally your goal is always to maximize what you do on your turns and minimize what your opponent does on their turns, um, whether it be through actioning them, through um, killing off a key piece, killing off if you have to choose between a piece of double token and one that has a single token, you're killing the single token piece, stuff like that. Um, just good to keep in mind, but that's what you're doing when you're moving up. You're trying to minimize what they can do to you on their next turn. That's generally the goal there. Um, action economy is, I've said it a thousand times, is um, probably the most important part of the game, um, at least the way I play the game. So, um, but yeah, that's as far as that. I will try to go over um, a couple 
uh, key scenarios that came up in the event. I'll try to remember them as much as possible. And, uh, um, you know, show them here on the roll 20. So um, I will set that up. Give me a second. Oh, okay, so here is the first, um, I guess, situation that I'm going to bring up where that happened in the tournament. Um, just to clarify, I'm not, these aren't going to be perfect. There could be tokens um, on different figures or there could be barrier and things like that. I just want to, as a general idea of what I did in the situation and how it worked out for me. Um, so this was in the final round of Swiss versus um, LTVH, Lucas. Um, and I had one map. Um, I had done my, my standard opener. Um, he had gone second. He rolled a six with his... Um, he equipped Sky Tyrant, did some, some other movement around, rolled a six with his Molecule Mint, so we had the ten barriers. He buried up like this. Um, he moved his Dark Phoenix away from the rest of his team, which is very smart because at the beginning of the game, I chose um, Power Cosmic with um, my Spider Ham because I knew I needed to get rid of... <laughs> Um, her and she's the hardest to barrier, right? If I kid pick Sky Tyrant, but then obviously here it's it's gonna be pretty rough for me to get to him. Um, he also very you know smartly took everybody out of the hindering on the map, so I didn't have any sort of actions there. So all I really had was my um, my Spider Ham for for the uh, the Alpha. Um, yeah, so um, this is after the, the standard opening. I have one action left here. Um, he obviously has Lord Doom, so I'm not going to be able to make any um, any of the Eni or Meanie Pogs. I'm also not going to be able to make um, the Mitt for, for whatever um, that's worth. Um, but yeah, here, here's where I am at. at um, and I have to I have to do as much as I can with this turn. Now, there was a couple of lucky things that happened this turn. Um, I did roll the 6 on um, Ultra Humanite. So I was able to to double token his Sky Tyrant because he equipped turn one with the Power Gem. That that alone is so huge. Um, this is where I, where I mentioned it can it can just win you games because now I can come over here and I can I can attack him without having to worry about a Sky a Power Gem Sky Tyrant on my turn two. Like that that's amazing. Um, it, it's just, it's so incredible. And then I also rolled a five with the um, uh, Waddle Arm. So I, so basically I have two free attacks with my. Um, with my spider ham when I when I move up, um, one of them has to be against a power cosmic figure, which is only here. But um, you know, it, it gives me options. Um, so what I did was, um, again, I have one action left. I have standard opener. Um, I know that I want to hit her with my um, with my spider ham, and and I want to do that as, as quickly as possible. So I see that twelve does not quite get me there with the giant reach. I can only reach to here. Um, so what I end up doing in this situation is perplexing up Spider Ham's movement to a 14, um, so I can get to here and, and just make the free attack with Giant Reach with uh, with Waldo Arms. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna <laughs> copy paste um, and then move around. Um, so a couple things are not right here. First, I double token there. That is the fourth action. I placed a chip here um, along with a um, one in power and then. I think it did like that, some some similar. Um, so that was my fourth action of the turn. I'm out of actions. I get to make the free attack um, against Bar Cosmic here. Um, I'm a 12 on a 16 because it's down one, so I only need a four. I have 18,000 props, so I'm going to hit that attack. I do hit that attack. Um, and then um, I sidestep up to here with Chip, and I carry my... Uh, spider him all the way to the back line behind his team this shows how versatile the team could be um with its attacks um it can get to where it needs to go for sure um, i place this guy here for an empower um i think i might have carried these guys up here it, <laughs> like yeah i ended up in some weird spot i sidestepped into hindering i think i placed this guy in stealth initially but more or less this is how how it looked um yeah but then i size up here with the empower and i am attacking uh, Valeria. Um, so I, I had the option to either kill Valeria or this, um, <coughs> excuse me, the charge flash for the leadership. They're, they're both his leaderships. Um, this one, I, I debated about it for, uh, for a second, um, maybe, maybe for more than a second, because they're both very powerful figures. Obviously this is the perplex. They both have leadership. Um, Valeria, um, you know, it's just a really good figure. The flash is, is pretty scary. What I, what I ended up making the decision for me was that um, I, um, I, this guy's double tokened, and this is a leadership adjacent to a double token Sky Tyrant, so I'm like, I need to kill her, um, and I have just enough with the Empower, uh, I'm a 12 on his 17, 
with the um uh da -da, uh the emotional modifier here um this i was a little nervous <laughs> nervous to me because i only have two probs on this i'm not used to that and i need i only need a five two probs so i, I do hit this um and that that's pretty clutch so you know from there he has um you know he, he's down 60 points he's got a sky tyrant that um this double token, so he's not attacking me next turn. Um, right here, I activate chip um, to say minus one to attack. Um, and then, yeah, I, I just say pass. And from here, um, I'm obviously in a really great spot. I'm 60 points up. Um, he can't do anything with the Sky Tyrant. Um, you know, it, he, even his attacks, like, <laughs> spoiler, he missed all of his attack. I think he hit one attack this turn. Um, definitely not on the second turn, though. So it was, um, you know, he, he's attacking with the the Lord Doom, but it, it's a 10 attack on, you know, an 8 or a 17. Um, I think he, he outwitted here and attacked here, but he needed an 8, and I have probs on it. Um, he attacked a couple times with Sky Tyrant, 11 on 18s on the Maggots. Um, but they have super senses. I think he might have outwitted some of them, but again, he, he needs 7s, and, <laughs> and I have so many probs on it. Um, he just ends up missing the attacks. Uh, without Sky Tyrant on his on his following turn, um, he's he's much less effective. Obviously, I I, this, I think I think he killed both of my Grods in this game, and then I wiped the rest. Um, again, he just couldn't hit. Um, even if he had Sky Tyrant on the second turn, I, I like my chances. It's obviously much more of a game, um, but the Sky Tyrant's going to be low on attack. Um, I have my probs. Even if he hits, um, it's hard for him to, to completely wipe out my maggots. If he kills too much stuff, I get to make um, pogs at that point. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a really... Even even against Lord Doom, you have options. Um, it shows the versatility of the team being able to get to the back line. Um, yeah, it, it just <laughs> it feels real good. Um, yeah, I'll go on to the next one. Okay, so I'd just like to apologize in advance for this one. I am not going to remember everything perfectly because I don't remember. There, there's 18 different figures on the map, so um, but just bear with me. Um, this is in the top four um, against PJ. He, he had one map um, and just equipped and some things. Some of his figures should definitely have tokens. Um, token here, probably token here because he equipped um, Exos on that guy. I don't even know. Let's say this guy's a I'm sure he's yelling at me because he has a specific thing he wants to do turn one. But for the bar purposes, this will be uh, good enough. Um, and then my turn one, I had equipped, um, done my just my standard open here. I'm not sure if it was the right or wrong call, but I did it. Um, just equipped Spider Ham and equipped uh, Chip. Uh, give me this, this, do this. Okay. And then I think I perplexed up like a defense twice here or something like that. Um, but yeah, this was my opener. Um, and then this is his turn two. Um, so first turn immunity is gone. Um, he decides to go for a pretty uh, a pretty big play um, to uh, with Exo on um, uh, this guy. He's going to energy explode. He's going to pick energy explosion and <laughs> energy explode my whole team. So he's going to go... Uh, he has... Oh yeah, this guy was equipped. So he has TK um, on him with a spin ring. Um, so he TKs him up to here. He's going to perplex up his range by one because he, he needs the range. Um, and then he running shot six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Carrying a Superman up with him. And then he is going to shoot uh, with his nine range. He's going to energy explosion targeting Spider Ham and targeting um, this Grod, which is going to hit my whole team. Uh, he's going to be a 13 attack. He's out of my prob range. He's got... Uh, theme props. He's got this prop. He ends up hitting my whole, my whole team. Um, I don't even think he needed to use a prop. I don't remember. But he hits my whole team for sure. Um, and I <laughs> I say, uh-oh. And he's also, you know, mocking me because he's PJ. He's in my head. But he, he uh, so he hits everybody. He kills those two. And then, as you don't know, um, this guy gets to uh, knockback. He has knockback on all of his attacks. And he gets to choose the direction. And knockback now, it does not matter how much damage you do. It is a static three. So it's a huge buff to him. He's trying, he's, he's wanted to displace my whole team. So he's trying to do here. So um, <clears throat> let me try to remember this jigsaw puzzle that he did to me. Um, so he definitely did that and this and this. Um, this guy's on his last click. I think I place him uh, just so he can be carried, I'm pretty sure. Like here. Um, 
and then he knocks this guy forward, this guy forward, and this guy up. I think that's how it was. I'm pretty sure. Um, everything's taking one damage. Um, obviously, I, my entire team is just displaced. He threw a, a, a goddamn grenade at my team. Um, and then he sidesteps back to here and places here, I believe, is how he goes. Um, to try and you know protect him, obviously, a little bit. Um, so he's up 20 points. Um, obviously, everything's damaged. He has a, a, a tempo swing there. Um, and then it, it's my go. I have to try to recover from this. Um, so I, you know, he, he's exposed his Magneto uh, slightly. Um, so I know I have to try to kill him this turn. And hopefully that um, uh, Superman Pog as well. Um, I had chosen Superman team ability with um, my Spider-Ham. So that's that's relevant. Um, because I, I get free attacks on there. Um, I roll poorly with this. I, I think I get plus ones, so I got a one or a two there. Um, so no free attack from him, which would have been super nice here, um, but, you know, we, we <laughs> make do. Um, so we sidestepping. Um, obviously, I roll all of my stuff like I'm supposed to. I don't know if I hit leaderships or not. Um, like I said, I, I the, the wall of arms, I do not hit the ultra humanite thing. Uh, so what I do is I just sidestep everybody to where they can be carried. Sidestep, sidestep. Um, I think, I know that I had to sidestep my chip back. So I think he's like up here or something. I don't know how exactly he got there, but I know I had to sidestep him back, um, to reach. Uh, so I sidestep like this and then like this and then like this. And so all of my sidesteps are gone at this point, um, which is a little sad, but you know, we got to do what we got to do. Um, so we move up with Spider Ham. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I think I end here. Um, generate this here. Um, I make a free attack uh, targeting this guy after I move up with the minus one attacks from here. So this guy's gonna die. Um, so that's you know something. And then I move up with Chip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, uh, placing like this. I think I place this guy in enduring. Um and then I do here and actually I think I do it like this. Like this. Uh yeah. Man, I really should have uh gotten some meanies and meanies here. Actually I'm gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna pause the recording or we'll go get some. Okay, so we are back. I got the, the mini pog here. So this is um more or less how I moved up. I think I you know I perplexed a spider ham's defense um yeah but so then i drop um top one uh so what i i know that i have to do is um this guy only takes one damage obviously from attacks i know i have poisons and i want to be able to use them to to chew through him so um he has uh toughness for his first two clicks so i have to hit him twice um before he, he gets off a of toughness and I can poison him. So I have three meanie attacks. Um, I know that uh, if I hit two of them, then I can just poison the, the remaining three for the kill. Um, and that's what I do. I ended up missing the first one. I used a lot of probs on it. He used probs on it. Um, but I, <laughs> eventually I had more probs. I have um, a 10 attack. He is on a um, a 17 defense with the, um, the modifier. So I needed a 7. Um, you know, I had probs on it, he had probs on it, but, uh, I missed the first one, um, and then I hit the next two. So I, I generated somebody, attacked, that was a miss, generated the second one, hit, generated the third one, hit, and then after the third, uh, attack, he goes to ESD, and then I was just able to poison him three times, and then, um, you know, eat, eat the, uh, eat the pogs, so they're all gone. Um, I was able to get two food tokens with my, um, uh, da, 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 my maggots, uh, and they were able to heal up because they'd taken the one, uh, which actually loses their props. So I was using theme props on this turn. I probably dropped down to like two or something like that. Um, but uh, that's one of the great things is having the, those six props um, just from theme. Um, yeah, so I was able to eat those uh, those things up. Um, scored 60 points there to his 20 for his opener. Um, I dropped my mitt um, after that, of course. Um, I at this point, I have no idea where it actually went. Probably something like that. Um, yeah, but but I'm up on points at this point. Um, I switched to the minus one to attack on his um, on the emotional modifier. 
Um, and then it's his go. I'm up on points. Um, his Sabretooth can't really reach me this turn. He can either um, reach me with uh, Sabretooth or Jim Hammond, not both. Um, I think he ended up energy explosion with Hammond and maybe missing. Um, can't exactly remember the rest of the team or the, the game, but um, as as it goes, you know, killing his Magneto is a big hit to his offense. Um, and robots struggle dealing damage, um, right? They can obviously only deal the one with the actual um, uh, danger rooms. Jim Hammond, you know, he can energy explosion, um, which is not nothing, but um, as long as I stay away from the Superman, um, you know, it's hard for him to deal, to chew through maggots without the Superman. Um, so his follow-up, um, uh, I, I think he misses the, the attack with my probs, because um, I have the probs back now with the mag maggots. Um, I think what he did was he TK'd, um, I think it was like to here, and then he running shot up here. Um, he, he energy exploded. Um, and... Uh, yeah, from there, my next turn, I, I charged in with Spider-Ham and, and killed a few of his um, remaining Superman. And at that point, it's just it's just too hard for him to chew through the team. Um, yeah, and so that's even even when I, I took the initial hit, um, he was up on tempo. Um, it, it can still dish out a lot of damage. Um, it can heal up, um, especially against robots healing up with the maggots was was super clutch because of um, how limited their damage potential is and how deep the dials are. Uh, yeah, so just another uh, situation I was able to to get through, I guess. Um, all right, uh, and uh, last one coming up. Okay, so this is the last scenario I'm going to go over. Um, this is in the finals against um, Maddie. Um, I was lucky enough to win Map. He's a plus 10 to my plus 9, so I was a little bit unfavored there, but I uh, was able to win that, so that that's probably the, the biggest thing in this game. Um, yeah, so this is my standard opener. Um, it's a little bit different. I'll explain that in a second. This is how he opened. Um, he only tokened one guy, um, Molecule Man for the barrier, and then he also did the free smoke. Um, so this is how he set that up. I'm pretty sure uh, his whole team's buried. And, you know, it's <laughs> pretty good. Um, yeah. So then it is my turn two. Um, I missed this roll. Um, so yeah, but <laughs> I'm going to show you how uh, two versions of this. One is how it, it should have went, and the second one is how it did went. Um, I made two key <laughs> play errors in the first couple turns this game. Uh, first is I. I just forgot to select a team ability with with Spider Ham, and so I just don't get to make free attacks, which is his main thing. So that that was very bad. Uh, that was something I should have remembered. Um, and then the second thing is um, when I started to move up, I'd actually forgotten to uh, to sidestep with my two maggots like I normally do on my opener. Um, so so I moved up here, and then I just started to move everything up like I normally do. And when I got to this maggot and tried to move him up. Um, and he's like, hey, that guy's not adjacent to the guy you carried, uh, which is fair. Um, and, you know, so I, I forgot to do the sidestep there. Um, he didn't let me take the, the move back, which is fine. Um, so I, I basically am down a maggot. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to show you first how the team, how the opener should have went if I played correctly and then how it actually went um, afterwards. Uh, so if I played correctly, um, I always pick um, team player against this team because it gives me Giganta, which is a key target, and then both flashes, which I, I, I like killing flashes. Um, and then now I'm supposed to do it is I sidestep, sidestep, um, leaving this guy who has not sidestepped yet. Um, and then from here, um, you notice I'm only four up. It's because he has a Mr. Oz, so he moved me back two with the with the TK, um, not a huge deal for my team, like I mentioned, because I don't really need the two perplexes for offense, so I just perplex up my movement. Um, so I go, uh, this is the ideal version. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, getting up to here. Um, and then I place uh, probably like a maggot. Um, again, this is the ideal. This is not how I actually went. Maggot, maggot. Uh, chip here. Um, I need one. Oh, to back. I need one um, and power here to get through the um, barrier. And then I place the non-sidestepped maggot right here. And then, you know, however I want to uh, place these things, it doesn't matter too much. Um, one thing that um, happened here that's, uh, he 
didn't <laughs> work out in my favor is he is currently in hindering quite a bit of it, um, which is very good for this guy. But, um, you know, lucky for Maddie, unlucky for me, I rolled, I think it was a two on his roll. So it ended up being nothing, which would <laughs> could have been very big. But, um, yeah, I just missed that. Um, but, yeah, this is ideally um, I... Oh, let me get my my mini pog. I forgot to get him out again. Bear with me here. Uh, da, 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 da. Where'd he go? Mini. All right. So um, this is again the ideal scenario. Um, with this back maggot here, I would drop it here and break his barrier here. And then with the front maggot, I would drop it and poison. Um, and this is so far what I what I did. Um, on the actual game, I, I attacked or I poisoned this front line. Um, the two the two flashes poisoned this guy. I actually hit this guy, uh, the molecule man, uh, ten on a sixteen with um, the emotional modifier here being within four. Um, so I need six. I hit that. I kill this guy, and then <coughs> excuse me. That's how it went so far. And then I would eat this up to get the um, um, the food token and then if i if i had a maggot then i would i would have sidestepped to here um with the one that had not sidestepped yet place here um and got a poison um at that point i probably would have used this maggot's charge um i'm not even sure to hit what maybe a high evolutionary um uh, maybe this thing probably probably her to try and finish her off um but yeah both of these both of these uh, would be dead. Um, I'd have a maggot over here um, trying to hit something. Um, and then uh, da -da. yeah, after that I would have sidestepped to here and carried um, my hammer eye to here. Um, probably carried something else for, for probs. Um, and then with my giant reach I can attack her, which is um, uh, free from the, the wild card team ability she has, the team player. Um, and then I, you know, I need a five, a four, and then um, with the free attack from rolling the five on the Waldo arm, so I, I would just kill her. So that would be my ideal turn. You know, I'm up what is it, 60, 90, 25, so one, one fifteen. Um, that's the ideal turn. That's how, that's how it should have went if I, <laughs> I just played my team like I had been playing it all day, but for whatever reason, nerves, if you want to say that, I'm not sure what it was, but I, <laughs> I messed up my team. Um, so what actually happened was um, pretty similar, just a little bit less optimally. Um, obviously, this guy is still back here. Um, this thing is gone. He has, still has both of his flashes, but they are on um, click two. Um, and then... She's here still um, because I only got the one free attack. So she's on her last click. It, I still did get her off of her, um, her what's it called? Her, her retail, which was the important thing. Um, but yeah, so I did this, um, and then I they're right where they were. Yeah, I sidestepped down here, and then. Okay, and then I, yeah, so I sidestep there, I place this guy here, I think I bring over one of these things, and um, I think I'll leave the high evolutionary there, I bring, I bring over a maggot um, to here, um, and then, yeah, so this this would be my, um, this is gone, um, I attacked her once, um, and then what I did was I made the mitt after that, um, well, a mistake I did make here was I, um, I switched to the minus one um, to attack, and then I made the mitt just because I forgot I could do it. Um, but I generated it here. He sidestepped over to here. And then um, I, I tried to finish this guy off. Um, needed a seven. Um, I didn't have any props on it because these guys had already propped. I, I used a lot of props the first time. I did not roll great. Um, so it would have been nice to hit that uh, that seven, but I, but I did end up missing it. Um, but yeah, this is how uh, this is how the first turn ended. Um, and then his second turn, or, yeah, second turn? Yeah, his second turn. Um, and I actually think this guy was one more up, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, but that was my the end of my turn. Um, he gets to go now, um, so the barriers will come down. I'm trying to do this as, as best as I remember. I watched the video. This one is a video, so that's very helpful for me. Um, most of these come down. Um, yeah, now it's his turn. It's time to do um, what he can to... Um, 
to, to kill me. Um, so he has a charge flash here. It is on um, click two. Um, he also has light objects scattered around. He probably has them held with his thing, so just bear with that. Um, he is going to perplex up his attack twice because it's a base 11 on his click two down to a 10 because of this. Um, so he perplexes it back up to a 12. Um, he uses Giganta on our click two to outwit this guy's um, combat reflexes. And then he's going to charge here, picking up an object. Um, he hits the first attack. Um, and then, oh, actually, I'm real sorry. I think this guy was sidestepped to here because he probed this attack. Um, but yeah, he, he basically he, he hits the first attack not using the object um, because if he used the object, I would get super sensitive shape change, so he didn't want that. Um, so he hits me for three, and then he uses the object on the second attack, staying where he is, to hit me for an additional four. Um, he's able to, to kill this guy. Um, so that is his first action. Uh, gives him a token there. Um, then he... Does some sidestepping with um, the uh, what's his name um, High Evolutionary. Um, so he he gives a uses an object here to give this one um, pulse wave, and he's going to sidestep to here and then running shot one two three I believe it's four to here. Um, yeah, that that seems right. Um, yeah, he pulse waves from here. Um, it's with four range, so it hits obviously my whole team. Um, he actually does not roll well here. He misses uh, first attack, and then the second attack, he's able to prob with this high evolutionary, and then also this high evolutionary. Um, he he ends up hitting, but it, it wastes some of his probs, so that's nice for me. Um, so when he hits, it kills uh, here, kills my two uh, grods, and then. Um, uh, yeah, obviously everything else is damage one. Um, he's gonna um, in the same turn, so that's a second costed. Um, he's gonna running shot. He's gonna sidestep to here. Oh, this guy also gets placed here with that. Um, and then he's gonna running shot down to here um, and try to dual target both of my maggots. He ends up missing this attack with the prob here um, for me, and he has also a ten on eighteens. Um, so that's you know that's fine for me. Um, that's the third action. Uh, then he does some fancy smanchy sidestepping around here. Um, he's gonna he's gonna sidestep. He's basically trying to get a support off on Giganta. So he goes like I think it's like sidestep, side no, sidestep, and then sidestep. Because uh, she has free support, so she's gonna try to support um, her. She misses. Um, initially, he was trying to get the. Um, the big retail back on, on the top click, but then he realized that nothing on the board actually hit anything. It was all maggots and then the guy he already killed. Um, so he can't do anything uh, there. Um, so I think he ends up, yeah, he, he ends up TKing um, with this flash. Um, he goes here and then he gets double placement with the flash and Mr. Oz. So it goes something like that. And then he moves Yafit here to try and block my, my movement because uh, he's autonomous. Um, and there is that. Um, yeah, so he, you know, it's a pretty solid second turn. He killed my, you know, my, <laughs> my, uh, my spider ham. He, he pulse wave did a bunch of damage to everything. Um, but I really wanted to show off this turn because this shows, um, exactly how strong, um, uh, the, the maggots are if you leave them alive. Um, it's uh it's actually pretty crazy um so what i ended up doing this turn um if i remember right is i um actually i set these up wrong because i know i did a poison here so it was actually like this and like this i can still get the poison off or the the support off here i don't know why this is still on the game um yeah but then my my next turn um i move up with this guy um sidestep one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I was actually one further up with him because I get to here um, with him. And then I place this poison pog to poison both of these guys, get them off of their um, uh, their top click, um, and also gets them off their prob, which is uh, pretty nice for me. Um, as an opener, um, I sidestep to here, and oh, I I very I leave this guy here because he's not dealing damage until later on. I can get an empower on that attack, so I, I leave him out there. Um, 
So I set that guy to there. I paste another thing um, and poison, which gets rid of her who is on regen. Um, deals the damage here, deals the damage here. He has toughness. Um, she's only three clicks long, so I attack with um, my maggot and or my eni or meanie or whatever it's called. Uh, end up killing her with that, um, and then I um, I eat this up to to get another um, uh, food token there. Um, I think I saved that for a charge. I do. Um, and then I sidestep with this guy to here and make a, another pog. Uh, poison her again. She's now taking two damage total for the turn. Um, and then I punch her with um, the maggot for another two, which kills her. Um, so just like, it's so much. I eat this up. I have a food token. So all of that, I, there's one costed action with with moving up but other than that i just i kind of just devastated the rest of his of his support pieces just with the pogs um just with free attacks um yeah it, it's a lot <laughs> it, it's 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 tough to deal with from here um i do get a little lucky here because i end up um i obviously switched to minus defense here which helps me a ton um, but i end up eating both of the food tokens with these guys um actually end up eating one yeah with him for the charge and then i charge to here um targeting this guy end up killing him that's actually my third hit um for the turn um because of the the two pogs and then this guy um so i'm able to generate um this thing which then gets this in power which is three damage enough to get through this is invincible um so i swing on that i'm able to finish that off using the prob from from this maggot again <laughs> um so the, the man the meanies do so much this turn it's it's incredible um able to kill this guy off i uh, eat that back up this guy's a food token um and then with my final charge um Actually, I try to be clever here. I, I try to sidestep here, generate this thing, sidestep to here, and then try to punch this thing. Only needing a six, but I missed, um, which would have been cool because then I could have charged this thing. Um, but I end up not being able to do that. Um, so again, I only I've taken I've taken two actions this turn: one with the move up here, and then one with the charge here. Um, so for my third action, I um, eat a thing here and charge to here to finish this guy off. Um, this is just all the three maggots and leaving three maggots alive. They can just wreck teams, um, especially a squishier team like this. Um, so I think I have a, a pretty good matchup advantage in, in this in this um, version, especially obviously when I win map, which is pretty nice. Um, and then last but not least, I, I perplex up this guy's attack twice and try to hit here. Um, oh, actually, that's not what I do. I forgot. I No, that, yeah, that's right. Um, just to try to punch him. I think I either miss or he rolls a super senses. Um, but from here, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty well in the lead. I have, um, all three of my maggots left. I have this guy, this guy, he, he really only has one attacker left. He's got this guy, but, um, it, it's pretty much over from here. I'm able to, uh, clean up the next turn. Um, it, his flash does do a lot next turn. I think he kills, um, he, there's a random object left somewhere here and he hits this guy for four with the object kills him, hits this guy for three with the object kills him, um, even through my probs. Um, and then... Yeah, but but then at that point, you know, he's just he's sitting here <laughs> with one health on his his only attacker left, and I have two guys that can generate poisonous autonomous pogs. So um, yeah, from there it's a pretty easy cleanup after that. Um, yeah, it's a it's a very strong team for sure. Um, I think that I like that turn a lot. It, show, it really showcases how strong the maggots are. But um, but yeah, it's a it was a it was a really fun last game. Okay, so uh, initially I was going to do um, possible changes, future changes for the team here, but um, for me it's it, it seems pretty tight, it seems pretty solved. Um, one thing I did think of was you, you could drop this guy um, to, to add in a Scott Porter Pog, and then um, instead of, on your turn two, um, you could TK with, um, uh, what was I going to say, TK with Chip. Um, TK um, spider him up with Chip, and then carry everybody up with um, Scott Porter um, instead of Chip, and then and then do it that way. And then, you know, that does give you five extra points over this guy. It gives you another perplex. Um, 
it does bring you down to an eight instead of a nine, which is pretty important. Um, you do obviously lose ultra humanites, like <laughs> game busting thing. You lose the thing on here. So I don't really think it's worth it. Um, but it, it was just something that, that popped into my mind. Obviously not everybody's going to agree with, <laughs> with everything nobody ever does in hero clicks. Um, so somebody's going to quibble about these objects. I think it's the right choice, but, um, but you know, there's, you know, you could do like a chemical fire on him instead that he has some good options there. Um, some people just don't like this object. You could do something else there. Um, you know, if you lose the gain the five points by switching him out for Porter Bog, you would get like a Lavaria bonus or a ring, something like that. Maybe you just want one a third object over one of these. Um, but it, it feels pretty tight to me. Um, three maggots seems like the right amount, even though the one weakness is Lord Doom, and it sort of magnifies that a little bit. Um, having 15 clicks of life that they have to deal with before the next turn um, seems really strong. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's about wraps it up. This ended up being a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, it's a really, really deep dive into the team and, and how the event went. Um, I know I, I really like this stuff when people do it, so I hope you guys do too. Please let me know in the comments down below on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm supposed to say that. Uh, helps out the channel a ton. Um, but yeah, if you want to leave a, a comment on Facebook where we posted there or something, I just I would really like some feedback um, on the video, and I, you know hopefully I can do more. I had mentioned something I did want to do in the future was to uh, make a hopefully a shorter video explaining to everybody why they are wrong for playing the uh, power gem over the wall of arms on um, Sky Tyrant. If you want to see that, um, you know throw that out there. Um, I just wanted to try to try to get more. Um, more video content going out there. Um, is something I'm interested in doing. Um, hopefully I keep the motivation up for it. But uh, yeah, th if you're still here um, after, I don't even know, this is going to be like an hour and a half or something. Um, thank you so much for, for watching and, um, you know, supporting Clicks Off. We, we always appreciate you. And uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for everything you guys do.